and shalom, I'm Jazz Clay Nine, and this is a video about a short video, quick video I hope, about Halloween. Or you could say not about Halloween because I'm not going to focus so much on Halloween. Halloween is not kosher. Kosher is a Hebrew word that usually applies to food, but it can be applied to other things also commonly when you're speaking commonly. And um, kosher means fit, pure, or proper. Halloween is none of the above. Pork, which is commonly known to be a non-kosher food item, which doesn't comply with Jewish dietary laws, can be made kosher in certain circumstances by the word of God and prayer. Halloween, however, is not kosher under any circumstances. Halloween and the form that we have it today is originally a Celtic, Druidic, Druidic, pagan, unholy day. There's already a lot of really, really, really great videos out there about Halloween or warning against it. So I'm not going to spend so much time talking about it, but I will say that it's a high, unholy time that involves even human sacrifice. It's an ancient, ancient day. It's pagan. It's one of eight evil, unholy Sabbaths that involve the equinoxes and the solstices and the midpoints between them. What's better than Halloween? Well, there's plenty of holy days and festivals in the Bible that are fully sanctioned by God. And they're pleasing to God. And God is the originator of them. And God doesn't just make things up for no reason. <laughs> so the holy days and the festivals that you find in the Bible, they're very significant. And you can learn a lot. These holy days and festivals are also anointed by God. So when you participate in them, God blesses it. <laughs> okay? They're also a lot of fun. So maybe that's the only reason, probably the only thing that's tying you to Halloween is the fact that you think it's fun. And even if you think, well, Halloween is not really evil, it's not really a call anymore because it's totally secularized. But being secular is not necessarily a good thing either because the Bible says the ways of this world are contrary to the ways of God and their identity. But anyway, what's better than Halloween? Well, there are nine holy days or holy festivals in the Bible. Seven instituted by God through Moses in the Torah and another two in uh, the prophets. For example, you're thinking Halloween and then all the candy and it's all, oh, you know, <laughs> it's fun as a child. Well, instead you have Hanukkah, eight days long. Candy is kind of a big part of it. There's lots of games we play with candy, and it's also a tradition to eat lots of fried foods. It's a very celebratory time. But what is it a celebration of? The miracle that happened in the temple, there was only enough oil for one day, but it lasted eight days. The greater historical context of Hanukkah is the fact that the pagan Greek Empire had taken over the land of Israel and were forcing the Jews to no longer be Jews. It was illegal to be Jewish. And not just um, speaking racially or ethnically, but speaking to the fact that they could not worship God. And that's what truly the meaning of Jew, to be a Jew, is to obey God and keep his commands. So you could not read the Bible, you could not praise, you could not worship God the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you could not obey the Torah and the Bible. Hanukkah means, Hanukkah means dedication in Hebrew, and it's a celebration of the fact that God was able to preserve his covenant on earth. Okay? And then we have Purim. Purim is another holy day. Um, depending on where you are in the world, it's sometimes celebrated for two days. And it's a celebration of the fact that a genocide was averted and the, the Jews were not annihilated in the time of Esther. So whereas Hanukkah is God is preserving his covenant, poor he's preserving his covenant by preserving his people, the people who he held covenant with. And so if there had been no Hanukkah, if there had been no Purim, there would have been 
no Yeshua, no Messiah, to have been born, to have been born a Jew, to bring, to be a light to the Gentiles. So whereas Halloween is a celebration of death, Purim is a celebration of life, the Jews weren't annihilated. And on that, and during that time, usually little kids, children, will dress up as characters from the story of Esther. So that's blessed and sanctified by God. Versus Halloween is not. Halloween is considered or is believed to have been the beginning of the Celtic New Year. Well, in the Bible, there's two biblical New Years. There's two calendars. So each calendar has its own New Year. There's the religious calendar and the civil calendar. The religious calendar begins with the month of Nisan or Aviv, and uh, that is also the month of the Passover, Pesach. And the Passover... As you know, it's the Passover of the angel of death because the blood of the lamb was on the doorposts of the Israelite homes. Versus Halloween, which is all about death. Versus Passover, which is about life. And the Passover of death. Okay? And it's not about um, accepting death or appeasing death or embracing it in any way. Okay? Passover is when the Jews made their, the Israelites made their exodus from the land of Egypt. So it's about leaving the world and not being worldly. So it's a picture of when you're saved, God makes you holy and he sanctifies you and he sets you apart from the world. So Halloween is very worldly and very, um, you know, if you really want to mix in with people, that good way, that's a good way to do it. Um, <clears throat> So there's Passover followed shortly by first fruits, which is the beginning of the harvest. And this is also the time when Yeshua rose from the dead. So there is celebrating life and the victory over sin, death, hell, and the grave. Now the civil new year is Rosh Hashanah, which in Hebrew means head of the year. And that is traditionally believed to be the day when God began to create the universe. And years later, on the same day, when God created Adam, mankind. So there, it's a celebration of life. It's also the day that it's traditionally believed to be the time of uh, Yahushua's return for his bride. And in the Bible, it is known as Yom Teruah, which means day of trumpets. It's also a time, it's a time of repentance and the trumpet blast, the trumpet blast, it's, you know, uh, to wake you up and it's a call to repentance as well. What else can we say about Yom Tua? Um, it's the beginning of a period of ten days known as the High Holy Days. So, that would be the holiest time of year, according to the biblical calendar. And the tenth day is Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement, Day of Atonement. And this is also believed traditionally to be the day when God will judge the world. So it may very well be the day when the, <laughs> the Great Tribulation could begin, or afterwards when, you know, the books of, are opened and God judges the living and the dead, okay? Yom Kippur means Day of Atonement. It's considered the holiest day of the year. It's a day not usually of celebration, but of um, sobriety, and, and, and it's a very serious day, and it's a day to look inside of yourself, examine your soul, and repent of your sin. But for those whose sins are atoned, it is already atoned for in the person of Yahushua Messiah, Yahushua Mashiach, Jesus Christ. It's also a time of celebration to know that God atones for your sins and forgives you. Now that is considered the holiest day, whereas Halloween is the holiest day for pagans. Okay, now I have not even mentioned all of the holy days or festivals. That's just a bit of them, and I have barely touched on them. But as you can see, they are very meaningful, and let me tell you, they are very anointed. God anoints this, and he blesses it. And all of them point to Yahushua as Messiah. So they all glorify Yahushua. And they are all shadows 
of him who is the reality. But that doesn't mean that we can't or shouldn't keep these holy days because they are fun and we don't need to go looking for pagan substitutes. And God doesn't just make things up for no reason. He gave us these days. He also he also made us. And so, so as Yahushua said about the weekly Sabbath, the, that man was not made for the Sabbath, but that Sabbath, Shabbat, was made for man. And the same applies to these holy days. These holy days are there to enrich our lives and to enrich us, mind, body, soul, and spirit. Okay? And they're blessed by God, whereas Halloween, I would say, the celebration of it, is cursed by God. Deuteronomy 28, all throughout the Torah, you have all these warnings against learning the ways of the nations and being like them. Um, as a born-again believer, you should be in deeper prayer that day, and if possible, in prayer and fasting because of the heightened level of evil spiritual activity, because people are on that day participating in evil uh, practices and occult practices. Halloween is a day of necromancy, which means contacting the dead. But around the world, in every hemisphere, in many different cultures, you find, around that same time of year, festivals to the dead, or of the dead. Halloween, ultimately, that's what it is. It's a celebration of death. Why would you want to celebrate death if the very reason that Jesus Christ in Hebrew Yahushua Mashiach came and lived and then died, the reason he died, the very reason he died, was so that you could have victory over sin, death, hell, and the grave. And nowhere in within Christianity, biblical Christianity, nowhere in the Bible does do you find any kind of celebration of death. We don't even celebrate the death of Jesus of Yahushua, we celebrate the fact that his death has atoned for our sin and we celebrate his resurrection, his victory over sin, death, hell, and the grave, and we celebrate his ascension to the right hand of God, who by the way is the living God. Yahushua Messiah is called the son of the living God, and in the Bible, when people took their oaths in the name of God, they would say, they would say, as surely as the Lord lives as surely as Yahweh lives. And God has said in his word, Am I not the God of the living and not the dead? And Kayusha himself says, has said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He has said, I am the resurrection and the life. So God is a God of life, and he is life giver, and his very name is the verb contains the verb to be, to exist, and he is the creator of all life. 